Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, to discuss further into the laboratory project on Taylor polynomials and now look at question four. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure to watch my earlier videos on questions one, two, and three. Links will be in the description below. And in those uh, questions I went over, first a recap on, this is actually question four. So I went over a recap you know, on linear approximation and then I went over in question one, uh, developing a quadratic approximation with this form over here, p of x equals a plus bx plus cx squared under these conditions. So make sure to watch that. And then went over an example. And then question two was on accuracy. And then question three, I looked at this form instead, which is actually better because it's easier to solve the constants and then it will be directly in the form of the, uh, uh, the function we're approximating in a convenient way, which is basically a plus b x minus a and then c x minus a uh, squared like that. And then what we end up getting was p of x equals f of a plus f prime of a and then x minus a plus one half f double prime of a and then x minus a squared. So now when this question four, we are asked find the quadratic approximation to f of x equals to x plus three to the power of one half or in other words square root x plus three. And this is near a equals one. And then we're asked to graph the function f the quadratic approximation that we want to solve and then the linear approximation from my earlier video titled linear approximation example on square roots on a common screen. You could uh, watch that video, put that in the link in the description below and it says what do you conclude? So let's look at the solution. So yeah, first of all recall from my earlier video that the linear approximation uh, which was uh, basically the same thing we were doing a linear approximation for the same function there L of X was uh, equal to 7 over 4 plus X over 4 and again we're approximating our F of X equals to square root X plus 3 or uh, same thing as writing X uh, plus 3 to the power of 1 half again the same thing as X plus 3 to the power of 1 half and this was near a equals to 1 or better written as x equals to a so when x is our a value equals to 1 over there. So now instead of the linear function we want a quadratic one. So I'll write we want a quadratic or parabola p of x which is approximating f of x and again this is near our x value or a value of uh, a equals to 1. So what we could do is from question three, so from Q3, we'll use that form. And then again, with A equals to one. And so we use this form right there. So make sure to watch my earlier video on that. Then what we end up getting is, is our P of X is equal to, and then we'll replace A with one. So F of one plus F prime of one. And then we have our X minus one, which is our A plus one half f double prime of one x minus one squared. So now we, all we have to do is well find these constant values, these uh, values of the function f and, and its derivatives. So what we'll do is first let's just f let's solve these out. So we have fx equals to well square root x plus three like that. Now this is the same thing again as writing as uh, x plus 3 power of 1 half. Yeah, just writing it like that is easier to solve the derivative. So uh, we could just plug in our f of 1 inside. So we have f of 1 equals to, well, 1 plus, uh, I'll just do the square root one, it's easier to calculate for this. 1 plus 3, that's just square root 4, which equals to 2. So yeah, we have f of 1 equals to 2. So that's uh, this value over there. That just equals to two. And then we have the derivative f prime of x uh, equals two. Well, the derivative put that one half down. So we have one half and then we have x plus three. And then we just subtract one half by one, which is just gonna be negative one half like that. And then we could write this easier to solve for the value at one. We could just replace this, flip it at the bottom. This becomes, uh, this is now gonna be, well, square root x plus three. It's the same thing as uh, writing it as power of one half, but at the bottom. So that just goes down, right? It's easier 
to uh, just because it's more common to write it like that. And now we can just solve for the derivative at one. This equals to one over two square root, and then this is one plus three is just square root four, which equals one over two times two, which equals to one over four. So that is our one over four value like that, one over four. And then next one we'll do is the second derivative of x. This is going to be, well, we get write this a bit closer. We can just put this down over there. That's going to be negative 1 over 2 times 2 is 4. And then this becomes x plus 3. And then minus 1 over there, or 2 over 2, this becomes negative 3 over 2 like that. Again, make this a bit easier. Yeah, easier to calculate. We just flip that at the bottom. So what we end up having is our 1 over 4 times the by. And I'm, what I'm going to do here is it's going to be flipped down. It's going to become positive. So I'll do x plus 3. And then I'll do now is, yeah, well, this is the same thing as writing 1 over 2 to the power of uh, 3 like this. I'll just erase this just because it's easier to solve. And then this becomes, well, at the bottom is 1 over 4 and then times it by 1 over square root x plus 3 and then power of 3 like that. Yeah, and the reason we're writing it like that is because now when we plug in our 1 or x equals 1 value inside, we get a 1 plus 4 and then times it by 1 over square root 4 to the power of 3, which equals to 1 over 4 times it by 1 over 2 to the power of 3. And 2 to the power of 3 is just, well, 2 times 2 times 2, which equals to 4 times 2. That's just going to be 8. So 1 over 4 times 8, and 1 over 4 times 8, that's just going to be 32, like that. And uh, yeah, if I put at the negative sign, there's a negative there, it's negative, 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 uh, just put it all around there. Yeah, so this is going to be, uh, this is going to be, again, this is 8 equals to negative 1 over 32, so that's this part right here, negative 1 over 32. And also a note, you could also solve it a different way just because it's very interesting. <laughs> I'll just do a, a note. Can also do, uh, instead of doing it like this, just because it's pretty interesting, we could do uh, negative, I'll just, I'll just write f double prime of 1, or of, of x like this, equals to 1 over 4. And then we'll have the x plus 3, and this is, uh, instead of it writing, yeah, let's write it like this first. This it can equal to negative 1 over 4, x plus 3. And then this is going to be, again, positive. Then we'll have it as uh, 1 over 2 times it by x plus 3. And then we have 2 over 2, like that. Just because uh, there's multiple different ways of using the exponent laws to break this apart. Because when you have the same base multiplying it uh, with each other, the powers add up. So 1 over 1 half plus 2 over 2, that's just going to be 3 over 2. And the same thing as writing just power of 1. So then we have f of 1 like this equals to 1 negative 1 over 4. This is going to be, well, square root 4. And that's just going to be, well, 4. 4 power of 2 over 2 is just, well, power of 1 like that. So then we have now we have 1 negative 1 over 16 times 2, which equals to negative 1 over 32. So again, that was just a uh, side quest, just to show some other cool way of writing it. So that's what we have, and now we can just put these all together. Remember, always, always remember this one half important, <laughs> like that. Sometimes uh, I, I forget it, and I will realize that. Whoops. So thus, thus we have p of x is equal to f of one, which is two, plus f of. Uh, let's just look at it here. Let's scroll up. So we have f of 1 is 2, f of f prime of 1 is 1 over 4, and then f double prime of 1 is negative 1 over 32, but when you have to uh, divide that by 2 there. So we have 1 over 4. Now we have the x minus 1, like this, x minus 1. And then we have to have a, again, plus 1 half, negative 1 over 32. And then we have x minus 1 to power, or just power of 2, or squared. So write this a bit better. So then what we get is p of x is equal to 2 plus 1 over 4, and then x minus 1. This adds up, becomes, well, 2 times 32 is 64, like this. So this is our 
approximation, like that. And also what we want to do uh, is note that the linear approximation from my earlier video, 7 over 4 plus x over 4, that's actually the same thing as this part here. So note that the linear approximation L of x is just the linear part, because that's going to be power of 2, that's going to be the quadratic, and then this is going to be the linear part right here. And you could, uh, you could see that's the same thing as from an earlier video. You could just expand this out. This is going to be 1 over 4 times x. is just going to be x over 4. And then minus 1 over 4 like that. Multiply here by uh, 4 over 4. to get the same common denominator. We could add those. becomes 8. Yes, we'll just have 8 minus 1 over 4. Subtract those plus x over 4 like that. And again, this just equals to uh, 7 over 4 plus x over 4, exactly what we had, or what I uh, had in the recap, and the recap to my earlier video. So now let's graph them all together, and here I've graphed with Desmos graphing calculator. Uh, the red is the, uh, is the square root function like that, and goes something like that in red. And then as you can see, the parabola approximates it really good. Uh, near our uh, a value, a value is a equals to 1 over here. In other words, all the way there. But then even the line is pretty much uh, on it close by. And that's again, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then as you can see, the green is over there is the line. Our 2 plus 1 half, oh, 2 plus 1 quarter times x minus 1, or 7 over 4 plus x over 4. And as you can see, it's not as accurate uh, when you get away from it. Uh, this is actually the red. So this, Vs, the, the blue line, which is the parabola. And then as even on the right side here, it's closer than this over there. So clearly the quadratic approximation is better than, uh, than the linear one, but what about at very close range? Because as you can see, it's hard to see just how similar they are. Well, if you zoom in, uh, and the way I did it, well, I just use an Excel table instead. So here you can download my Excel file over there and play around with it. But here's a table I made. Here's our f of x function. That's the square root of x plus 3. There's our a value. Our p of x is just this. is for reference. And then we have, that's a linear function. So if you have x, I had x values of 0 0.75, 0 0.98, 0 0.99, and 1. And then 1.01, 1.02, 1.25. And as you see, when you plug in 1, uh, we have x minus 1 is going to be 0. So all we're left with is going to be just f of 1, because uh, all those terms vanish. So when you have x minus 1 is 0, go to, to the uh, this function here. When you plug in 1, 1 minus 1, these all go, go to 0. This becomes our 2, which is our just, uh, just our f of 1 function right there. So these all go to vanish. It becomes just our exact value. So that's what we have. There's our f of x. That's just a square root of x plus 3. And then we get uh, every single one's the same thing. And then also the difference, f of x minus p of x, and the absolute value of the difference between the quadratic and the difference between the linear one over there. And then I did it for the different values. As you can see, when it's really far away, 0.25 away from 1, we have a uh, approximation of this. This is uh, 3.17. Uh, this is times 10 to the power of negative 0 or negative 5. And just for reference right here, Note, this is the same thing as writing, this is just an exponential notation, 3 point, uh, this is yeah, the same thing as writing point zero, 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 four zeros, and then a 3, 1, 7, 6, 4, which equals to point, or the same thing as writing, 3.1764 times 10 to the power of negative 5 which is again the same thing as using their notation using 3.764e negative 05. These are all the exact same thing. So the bigger, bigger uh, the negative power, the uh, further the more zeros you have. You'll have this 1.9, so that means you'll have eight zeros, and then because it goes to the decimal place like that, just a reference. But as you can see here, this is to the five, this one is to the, uh, well, t uh, this is to the three. So this is actually much more accurate. And then when you get even closer to 0.99, you get this all the way to the uh, power of negative 9 as opposed to the power of negative 6. So this is uh, like three orders of magnitude uh, more accurate. Same thing uh, on the downside here. And then when you get 1.25, you can see this is uh, over here. This is going to be our 9.47e uh, 
to make it the same notation one two three four so it's still not as accurate as this one so it's more accurate so yeah p of x is much uh, is a much better approximation even at very near values to x equals a equals one so when x is the a value which is just one so yeah that is all for today of you followed along this pretty extensive um example video on using quadratic approximation as method as the method in question three and also to see the accuracy versus just linear approximation anyways that's all for today uh like always you can download these exact notes in the link below as well as viewing these notes on steam in article format so make sure to follow me at mes and also make sure to always download uh, i mean i'll go play around with or i mean uh, go check out my math forums and post any cool math or science related stuff you want as, uh, as well as play around with the desmos calculator uh over here is pretty amazing uh, and then also uh, you can download the Excel file and play around with that as well. It's pretty cool. Anyway. Uh, so anyways, that's all for today. Uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.